Let's get back into it. 9th January, SS Buria, first class cabin passageway. I wish we hadn't been thrown out like that. I wish we managed to find some clue as to what that speckled band might be. We didn't manage to investigate at all. And I imagine that we won't be able to for a while longer. We'll never get past that sailor guarding the door. He's clearly glaring at us as if to say, don't even think about it. Oh, wait a minute. What is it? Well, what happened to our great detective friend? Where did he go? Oh yes, he completely disappeared. When did he do that? He stepped away as quietly as the wind, but not before ensuring that these were securely back on my wrists. All right. I guess we're gonna try to head to somewhere else. We can't go back in here though. The Slavova's cabin, a cabin on the SS Buria. Famed Russian ballerina uh, Nikolina Pavlova is hiding out in here. She's on the run from her homeland. Oh, uh, we shall never be able to enter the other cabin with Seaman Shrugged off in the way. Okay, let's move. Actually, can we... Can we go this way? It's locked. I can't open it. Well, no, well, that's the answer reason. No one wants to let a murderer escape. Gosh, she gave me a very stern look when she said that. Okay, I guess we have to go back to our room then. Okay. I haven't visited this place in a while. Have we? Oh, the guy's back. 9th January. It looks like they're still investigating in here. Yes, on that subject. I wonder if Inspector Hosanna guy is unscathed. What do you mean unscathed? Surely you haven't forgotten, have you, Naruhoto-san? Don't you remember what he said about allowing you out of this cabin to investigate? I was going to talk to the captain about it. He say he said he'd lay down his life on the line for you. Oh, yes. But I'm sure he was exaggerating. Let's see what he has to say for himself. He might have some new information for us. You never know. got beat up. Ah! Ah, we're back. I Inspector! What happened to you? Your face is... Please, don't worry about it. They're just scratches. Made by a bear, maybe. I told the captain I'd given you permission to investigate. Tell me to me with his fist and then toss me over. What? The pummeling was over in a flash, and he must have decided against throwing me overboard. So it was nothing really. It looks like it wasn't, he wasn't joking when he said he laid on life on the line if he had to. Well, thanks to your efforts, we know a little bit more about the neighboring cabin. Yes, so I understand. Oh! I bumped into a man claiming to be a great detective a little while ago. I think his name was something like Herlock Scholes. I don't think he was German, though. Ah, that explains it. Shall we compare notes then? We can tell you what we found out. Yes, let's do it. Cabin next door. What? Nikolina Pavlova? She's in the cabin next door? Oh, do you know who she is? What's up? What self respecting ballet fan wouldn't know that graceful angel? <laughs> oh my gosh, she got excited about ballet. Oops, I think I have said it there. Well, that tells us the neighboring cabin is unrelated to the case at least. Oh? How? Those angels don't go around committing crimes, do they? <coughs> Oops. Now I'm definitely upset him. Inspector, is your investigation here proof fruitful? If I'm honest, there's very little more that I can do. My duty is to make sure the scene is disturbed, ready to hand over to the Hong Kong police. So I'm just keeping watch here, trying to not take my eyes off the job. Oh, I see. Ah, there is one thing. I do have a small piece of new information for you. Oh, what? Yes, do tell us, Inspector, please. New information. What is this new information you have, Inspector? This is this. The Berea's medical officer has examined finished his examination of the body. I managed to obtain the report. Oh, Kazuma's post-mortem report? 
Kazuma-sama. So, what was the cause of death? Damage to the cervical vertebrae, as was written in the report. His neck was broken? Yes, it would seem so. There were no obvious wounds or other signs of injury. So at first, I think they were considering poison. But it turns out they, they found no trace of poison in the system at all. Well, what weapon was used then? Nothing has been found as yet. The fact that there are no signs of a wound suggests that it may have been a blunt object. I mean, that wouldn't leave a mark. Oh, I see. All the body's nerves would run through the spine to the brain. A strong enough impact to the neck could induce death. It is a possibility. No obvious wound would be left. Poor Kazuma. I have a second copy of the report. If it might be useful, you're welcome to have it. Really? Are you sure? Yes, it's fine. I trust you. After all, if I didn't trust you, I'd never have agreed to you leaving the cabin in the first place, would I? Ah. Postmortem report. A report from the SS Burias medical officer giving the cause of death as a cervical spine injury. There are no traces of external injury or poison. Great detective. Oh, Mr. Jones was here, was he? Yes. He seemed to be enjoying himself a little too much as he crept about on the floor investigating. But then he suddenly left. I suppose he must have become bored. Did he say anything at all? Actually, now that you mention it, yes. Just one thing, but he practically shouted. It's shoe polish. That's all he said. Shoe polish? I wonder what he meant. The ink, maybe? When he was over there by the broken piece of broken glass, do you see? Oh. Ah, perhaps he was talking about this brick colored mark, do you think? Ah, yes, that must be it. But how did Mr. Sholmes know that it's shoe polish? Hmm. That leaves me cold, I'm afraid. I have no idea. What is it, Susato san? Well, Kazuma Sama was wearing leather shoes with a very dark tan hue. Dark tan? Yes, like the color of red wine, but darker. I often repaired them for him. Oh, does this mean that this mark was made by the polish on Kazuma's shoes as they scuffed on the floor? Mark on floor. A, a piece of a small glass object and what looks like a scuff mark made by Kazuma's shoes were found by the victim's body. That's really all I can tell you at this stage. I should return to my post. My fellow crewman's eyes are boring into the back of my head. Yes, it might be for the best. Thank you. <coughs> Poor inspector, you look exhausted. Oh, no, well. I feel terrible that I failed to protect Asubi-san. He was my responsibility. Of course, my pain is nothing compared to yours. You were his friends. The truth is, I seem to have a heavy head ever since I woke this morning. A heavy head? That's interesting. My head's still throbbing too. Oh, maybe they drugged everybody so that nobody knew what happened. Uh, okay, so let me inspect this mark again. It really is such a beautiful color, this glass. It looks like whatever it was has broken clean in two. Clearly it happens nowhere to be seen. And then there's this brick colored mark. There's a shoe polish, according to that great detective you seem to know all about. Okay. I suppose it must be from Kazuma Sama shoes. Maybe, but what I'd like to know is... How can the detective be so sure that it's shoe polish and not something else? Because he's a great detective, of course. That's hardly a reason, is it? Again, too. So clear that the letter written it with the ink that somehow spelled on the board. And it's spelled a Russian word for a board. Card. It does seem to be an, an unambiguous pointer for you, Nadal the Sun, as you were sleeping in there. But to be truly but to be truly ambiguous, it could have just spelled out it should have just spelled out my name, don't you think? Well, either way, one fact remains. It's hard to imagine the cousin Sama would have written his last words or a word in Russian. Which begs the question, who did write it? 
is the question. Uh, oh, we can resort this again, I guess? This one Cosmo spent his final moments writing his diary. 1.23 a.m. I hear a faint whistling sound. 1.35 a.m. What looks to be like some sort of speckled band is dangling from the ventilator grill. Looking at his writing here on this page, it's almost impossible to believe that he's gone. Cosmo Sama left us a valuable clue in these words, I'm sure of it. We have to solve this mystery, Nazaho the Sun. We will. Alright, anything else? So this ventilator joins to Miss Pavlova's cabin. Yes, that's right. And just a few minutes before he died, he cousin us saw something emerging from him. The speckled band as he described it. If only Miss Pavlova ha had been able to shed some light on it, but she seemed as baffled as we are. Yes, I wonder if she's telling us everything though. I'm not sure. I know most people aboard would say the same about me, but there was something about that woman that didn't sit right with me. Okay, anything else to observe? Let's see. Well, we fixed the bookshelf. All the books provided for passengers last night in scabby neatly arranged on the shelf. They were all over the place when we first looked around, if you remember. Oh, yes, and you tidied them up, didn't you? Take a look at it. The ship's property. Unruly behavior in the cabin leads to damage. But it really wasn't me to knock them over. Well, anyway, I feel much better now that they're neatly lined up. I can't relax when things aren't tidy. Uh, ew, where did you go? Oh, sorry. I I, I went to the extra cabin to Why? Who gave you permission for this? Uh, well, it's that I mean, Timmy and Holden are <laughs> That no Japanese was it? Later, I will roll them into a ball and throw them into a cold room. <sighs> I'm gonna go back to garden door. I hope Inspector Hosanaga doesn't find himself in too much trouble on our account. He's really gone out of his way to help us, hasn't he? When we get back to Chan, we'll have to take him for a steak at Lock Carnival. It could be a very long time from now, not a hope son. Unfortunately. Alright, anything else new? Let's see. I inspected all this stuff. I guess that's it, huh? This case, the floor. Strong enough has gone. Strong enough? The burly Russian sailor who's always crossing his arms and glaring at us. Uh, all these Russian names are impossible to remember. Huh? -la -la. Did you hear that? It sounded like someone singing. -la 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 I did it. I did it the great detective way. I don't know who was singing, so I just guess. <laughs> Miss Caroling, I know that lark like voice. Well, never mind that now. This is a golden opportunity for us. Yes, you're right. We must seize it. Let's get inside Miss Pavlova's cabin while we can and investigate. Definitely. Before that, stringy knot. Stringy knot? <laughs> Crewman comes back. Miss Stroganov, not stringy knot. Alright, let's go in. Hajush. Sabova isn't back yet. This isn't the sun. Oh, where, where has she gone? Hey, what are you doing? Those are your private things. Not a moment to waste, Nazo the sun. We must investigate as quickly as we can. I suppose you're alright for Cosmo's sake. Not just for Cosmo's sake. What do you mean? Can't be long now until we arrive at the port in Hong Kong. I... Don't want you to be in those handcuffs when we get there. R really? We must solve this case, another the son. For ourselves if we have to. Yes, we will. Alright, time to examine. Let's just start on the right. Easy enough. Another son, are you there? Sorry? I'm right here, yes. Why? Oh, good. 
good. I thought you might have climbed into the wardrobe when I wasn't looking. There's no place at home. Believe me, I don't have some strange compulsion to jump inside every wardrobe I see, you know. Well, anyway, I'm not sure anyone could fit inside this one. It's full of beautiful outfits. I suppose they're all stage costumes. Hmm. I was rather hoping we might find Miss Mumble's friend hiding in there, but no such luck. This ventilator connects to Cosmo's cabin next door. Yes, although what a fool a strip builder must be to open a ventilator into another room. Ah, maybe it's so bad if there's a gas leak next door. The occupant of this cabin will notice and raise the alarm. Or the occupants of both cabins will die of gas poisoning. <laughs> hmm, that is a possibility. Anyway, last night Cosmo wrote that he saw a speckled band coming out of this ventilator. I these next to the bed in Cosmo's cabin, too. Yes, it's a bell core. I can't resist. Oh, no. Bing bong. She barely hesitated there, and she gave it a good tug, too. No, I didn't actually expect anyone to come. We don't want them to. We're trying to investigate his secret. Not something we can investigate. I guess I'll have a bag. Some bag is not important. Okay. Let's check out this traveling case first. Oh, hi! Hey. Doesn't know this case is open. It's completely empty inside, but according to the great detective's great deduction, she was hiding her special friend in there. Yes, a friend that she had to keep secret. Because you're not allowed to bring animals aboard the SS Furia. I wonder what kind of animal she had in there. And more to the point, where is it now? That is a good question. All the books have toppled over together. Look, every single one. You think that's the god of the sea, perhaps? He's toppled too, though. Exactly the same as the bookcase next door. In Cosmo's cabin. Perhaps... Perhaps Miss Van Vogel was practicing a difficult ballet pose and fell against the bookcase? I don't know. Would she really be practicing ballet on the same night she ran away from her ballet company? Alright then. It must have been you. You lost your temper and knocked them all over in a fit of rage? Not everything bad that happens on the ship is because of me, you know. Well, anyway, I'll set them all straight again here, too. I don't like seeing things in disarray. Alrighty. Oh, yes. This plate in this cabin, too. Look, the SS Burrier's rules of passage. Passengers must not keep weapons or other dangerous objects in their cabin. Pets are also strictly forbidden. I suppose Miss Valvola realized that she needed to keep the contents of the case a secret after all, after she read this. Her special friend, I mean. I wonder what her friend has disappeared to now. It's probably having fun exploring the ship, I imagine. I just hope Steven Shrugginov doesn't find it and throw it overboard. Oh, yes, so do I. This cabin door has the same simple sort of bolted, bolted latch that our cabin door has. The little sort of cost, there's no way anybody could either enter the cabin from outside. Yes, it's not a particularly heavy duty bolt, is it? But still, it wouldn't just slide across of its own accord, would it? No, the door is made of metal, so there's no chance of trickery using magnets to unbolt it from the outside. And it seals up perfectly too, to stop any seawater from coming in. So you couldn't use the method you told me of passing a thread through a crack around the closed door either. I seem to know a lot of tricks for opening doors. I'm starting to see why they suspect me. Check on this side. Uh, the table. So there's some papers there, maybe? Uh, there are just a few books on the desk, nothing else by the looks of it. Well, Miss Malvova only ran away from the ballet last night. She hardly occupied this cabin for any time at all. That's true. I wonder what kind of book she likes to read. Hmm, let me see. Yes, I see. Yes, I see. Miss Mamboba enjoys reading books written in Russian. Thanks. I think I probably already knew that. I tried to ask too much of people in Anu Hodasan. Kindly remember that. <laughs> I suppose every cabin has a waste paper basket. Should I have a little look and see what's been thrown away? Anu Hodasan. It's poor teeth that goes sifting through someone's rubbish, you know. Uh, those eyes. He's looking at me like I'm a piece of rubbish now. 
However, these are special circumstances, I think. Exactly, we have no choice. Hardly anything in here at all. Oh, well, that's a little disappointing. Dish for the pet, I bet. I wonder what this little saucer is doing on the floor. As it doesn't look like it's been dropped, more like it was put there deliberately. Oh, do you think, do you think that there could be a leak in the roof just above here? What? A leak? Is this ship quite safe? I'm, I'm, I'm sure that even if there's a little leak on the roof, it doesn't mean the whole ship is gonna sink. N no, no, you're right. Of course you're right. She's really trying to persuade herself, isn't she? Teapot is empty. Hmm. So the natural conclusion is that the Russians are a very thirsty people. Or because Miss Valvovo only came with his chem last night, she hadn't had the chance to make any tea yet? I mean, it could be either. It's definitely that they're excessively thirsty. I'd lay a thousand to one on it. Rather obstinate, aren't you, Mother Hilda's son? So silly. So silly. Uh, is there anything else in here? I mean, I can't check the carpet either, right? Oh, I guess that's it. We're not missing anything, are we? Not the bed either. Not this thing. The chair? Nope. Can leave then. Hmm. Maybe we missed something. Uh, let's go back to the passageway. Let's check the CD. I mean, the door's probably still locked, right? Oh, hello. What are you doing? Oh, that's Mr. Sholmes, look! Wow, you never know where he's gonna turn next, do you? He seems to be stealing a look at something as he sings to himself. Oh yeah, we heard the singing. Cha la 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 I did it the great detective way. He's still singing. Do you think he hasn't noticed us? Or somebody in extremely high spirits? Yes, there were times, I'm sure you knew, when the yard bit off more than it could chew. And through it all, when there was doubt, a lucky her luck was about. Um, excuse me. I solved it all and stood tall, I did it the great detective way. Mr. Sholmes! <laughs> oh my god. What is it? You want to fight? Hmm? Honestly, interrupting a fellow when you I was just about to reach the climatic finish! Sorry. I thought you were never gonna stop, so I figured I was not as good time as any. I need to jump to the floor with, a, one, of, with one of my famous brush hooks. Alright, I get the picture. Now, would you put those fists away? This guy. This guy. Mr. Sholmes. You seem to be examining something before we interrupted you. Oh, yes, that. I was immersed in the study of the ship's log, as penned by the Stockley built crewman, who was, who was usually on guard here. Oh, yes, the ship's log. And did you find out anything useful from it? Well, after 2 a.m. this morning, the majority of entries are blank. Which means that there was nothing to report. Nothing of note happened. Ha 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 ha! Ha 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 ha! We truly are a student from the land of the rising sun. We've been utterly blinded by it. Ha ha ha. Sorry? Your logic, my boy, is inverted. Whatever do you mean, Mr. Sholmes? Observe the other pages, and all shall become clear. It would seem that the crewman oft stands sentry in this first class passageway, and he has almost religious practice of recording nothing to report every half hour. Oh, he writes that in every 30 minutes? Report? 
Precisely. Put simply, the human rights nothing to report when there is just that. And yet, this was long from last night. It's largely black. It didn't even write nothing to report. What do you mean? Yes, there were circumstances afoot of last night which led to the seaman being absent from his post. What kind of circumstances? What happened? That remains a mystery for now, but we can be sure that something significant took place. So significant that it caused the seaman to forget his regular habit of scribing nothing to reports in the log. These are important details. I would stake my life on it. You must log the sh ship's log in your mental fire. The ship's log, a record kept by the crew assigned to the first class cabin area. There are virtually no entries from 2 a.m. until early this morning. Now that deduction was worthy of a great detective. Ah, you're sorting to a standard. What my way is, I see. What makes it shows, shows. Brilliant. Ouch. What is it? Are you hurt? Oh, don't worry yourself. I seem to be afflicted with a throbbing head this morning for some reason. Nothing more. Well, my friends, until our next encounter. I like how he just like keeps running around and saying that. That he's like, he's like, see you later. When we're just like all on the same ship, he's still singing to himself. I can hear it as he wanders off down the passageway. Is something wrong? Says the son. You seem to be lost in thought. It's just, well, I feel the same. Sorry. Ever since I woke this morning, I've had something of a headache. A sort of continuous throbbing. Oh, you too. To Miss Pavlova's cabin, I guess. Is, is this door still locked? It is. Oh, I guess we have to look at the log. Do we? Oh, I guess we have it. This. Oh, we have a lot of things to look at. Let's take a look at all these. Uh, victim, male, far eastern. Time of death, sometimes between 1 a.m. and a little past 2 a.m. Cause of death. Damage to the cervical vertebrae, resulting in instant death. The victim's neck was almost certainly broken as a result of a strong blow to the area. No obvious external injuries or traces of poison. Mark on the floor. Magnifying glass. Interesting. I guess you don't always need this, uh, this much detail, but it's interesting that it's there. Ship's log. Okay, let's take a look. Oh, I can't click on anything, I guess. I was hoping we could talk about it, but that's okay. So he would always write in it, but then this is missing. So I'm either I'm either thinking he had something to do with it, or that just like everybody else, we were all drugged, right, in the middle, of the, so that we would all sleep at night. So that could possibly uh, be it. Miss Pavlova's cabin. This could be our chance. What? Really, Sailor doesn't be appear to be around at the moment. We can investigate every last inch of that cabin. I'm not sure if we could go that far. We can certainly do with looking around more. I'm sure we can learn something. Okay. First class cabin number one. Yes, that's our cabin. Not our cabin, it's Cosmos of us. Didn't we already say this? Yeah. We already had this conversation. Okay. Let's go back. Um. Maybe let's see in here to see if there's anything else we might have missed. Ding -a -ling -a -ling -a -ling -a -ling. Oh. Uh, what's that? Oh no. Shut down the engine immediately. Vessel sighted. A quarter mile four. Full stop. Hard to starboard. All up hand. Praise for impact. What the? about to crash into another ship. What? Oh my gosh. Ah! I, I can't see. So that the sun, hold on to me. Ah! So that the sun, are you alright? Are you injured at all? I, I think I'm fine. Thank you, Nada the sun.
Looks like we avoided a collision. I think. Yes, the ship has come to a stop. Oh my goodness! What about you, Little Sun? Are you hurt? No, I'm fine. Oh my gosh. Hello, is anybody in there? Shout if you need assistance. Oh, that sounds like... Inspector Hosanaga. Is there you in there, Little Sun? Unbolt the door, quickly! What? The bolt? Look at that! The door's bolted! Did you do that, Susanna Sun? No! I didn't touch it! Well, that's strange. How did. And look at all the books! It's all just like they were before again. Little Hosanaga, aren't you gonna open the door and let the inspector in? I'd better tidy this place up first. A rail emergency stop had solved one mystery, at least, in a very vivid way. But I knew that what awaited us on the other side of the cabin door would not be pleasant. I hurried around tidying up the cabin with a new sense of foreboding in my heart. To be continued. More progress. Miss Pablova's cabin. Somehow, the door to the cabin we were, we were in ended up bolted after we made an emergency stop. Says that son took a deep breath and gently slid the back back of the bolt. Slid back the bolt. You, what are you doing in Miss Bobova's quarters? Ah, uh, you both got hurt. Good. Yes, we're fine, thank you. What on earth happened? We heard something about how we were going to fight with another ship. Yes, it appeared to be a false report. Oh, how did that happen? There's a dense fog outside, so it's extremely difficult to see. Someone must have thought that we saw a ship, a ship ahead. This person obviously triggered the alarm, and that's why I made an emergency stop. Everything is chaos. Passengers are just screaming. Crew are running everywhere. This first class area is the only quiet part of the ship at the moment. Oh, I see. Someone triggered the alarm? Does that mean... Has someone press that button outside? Yeah, yeah, we can enter the... Just falling back. You are the devil. Sorry, me? I've been called a lot of things before, but devil is the first. You have a night traveling case. How could you? What? No, no, we didn't touch it. That's right, Miss Fabova. It was already open when we came into your cabin. Inspector! Um, yes? What is this man? I know he did it. He's the criminal. It's not enough that he has killed a man. Well, and he's a soul way as well. Vixen promises not to steal chicken. How do you believe? Uh. Take him away. He's a trespasser as well as everything else. Stowing away, trespassing, killing, she's right. You are dead. Doesn't look good, does it? There's still below deck. Throw him in. Tomorrow we talk in the hotel. We'll give you straight to police. Wait, a cell? Please, Inspector Hosnaga, isn't there nothing we can do? This is a Russian vessel. I really have no jurisdiction here. My last effort to appeal to the captain's good nature, I think I'm out of options. This is terrible. This is a real crisis. I've got to find a solution. Immediately. Oh, jeez. Uh... Let's see. Oh my gosh. Hello. What the? <laughs> What are you doing up there? Oh my gosh. Mr. Schultz? Naturally. I was analyzing what a weight of 20,000 rubles feels like on one's head. Have I not told you that as a detective, it, it is my business to know what other people do not? This isn't mere tomfoolery, my boy. Oh no, no. Um, well, why were you hanging from that hook before then? Isn't this obvious? 
to properly assess the weight of the 20,000 hoops, naturally. I wish to determine that if it would bend that conceited hook. Lucky hook on the wall. So full of brag and bounce. Ah, uh, I never know when to take this man seriously or not. Ah, you again. Great detective. Ah, Inspector. I confess I've been looking for you. I have something to report to you most urgently. Well, you might try looking for me somewhere other than hook on the wall next time. What is the report? Speak! An urgent report from a great detective can mean but one thing. Yes, the case of a curious murder that took place last night here on this vessel, Steamship Berlia, has been solved by me, naturally. <gasps> what? Really? Yes, I've eliminated all other possibilities. No other explanations exist. So, allow me to illuminate all your minds. For I am about to reveal my great detective quickly and my great deduction to the case. Ha! You are so good! Even the Chug understands this case. We all knew who was responsible for killing student boy this morning when we found the criminal in wardrobe. It is this doorway, and he has handcuffs to prove it! I didn't do it! The trouble is. There doesn't appear to be anyone else who could have killed the victim. Because, as everyone knows, the cabin door was bolted shut from the inside. That means the cover must be someone who was inside the cabin. Yes, it was called a locked room mystery in detective stories. The locked room, that is point. The room was locked. Well, I can't deny that. There's no way the bolt could have been drawn across from outside the cabin. You're qu all quite mistaken. The cabin next door is, is not a so-called locked room at all. What? Oh yes, there's another entrance. An entrance used last night by the culprit in order to gain access to the cabin despite the bolted door. What other entrance? We number seven. Why? It gapes open mouth as at you even as we speak. The ventilator man. The ventilator? You think this is funny? I cannot even put my arm through that hole. That's because your arms are just like a street drums. You're suggesting that the culprit entered and left the victim's cabin through that tiny opening? It's not possible. Ah, but it is. And last night, the victim witnessed the intruder in the act of passing through the ventilator. Mr. Sholmes, do you mean... Are you referring to the words Cosmo Sama wrote in his diary? At 1.23 a.m., I can hear a faint whistling sound. At 1.35 a.m., well, it looks like some sort of speckled band is dangling from the ventilator grill. Precisely, my dear madam. But what does it mean? What is this speckled band? The answer to that particular conundrum is in this very cabin. M Mr. Sholmes, what are you doing? There's a distinct element of danger, but fear not. I am ready. What I'm about to expose for all, all to see will shock you to your cause. Behold. This guy got moves. Ah, ah whoa, what the? He does have moves. That's true. Oh my gosh. Ah, it's a snake. Oh, her pet's the snake. Oh. Allow me to introduce you all to the bar. The speckled bar. The snake? Indubitably. <laughs> Everyone's like, what? Alright. Mr. Sholmes, just one thing. Hey, what troubles you? Well, that snake. Isn't, isn't really speckled, is it? That's more stripey, wouldn't you say? Hmm? Yes, you're right. I think in this case, you'd have to call it... The striped band, wouldn't you? Meh, <laughs> 
you both see and observe with distinction. However, do you not think that is precisely the trap into which the culprit wishes you to fall? Oh my goodness, really? It's, it's a trap? How exactly? I think perhaps it is time I explain the intricacies of my train of thought. Are you ready, Miss Blah Blah Blah? I'm sorry for the young man who died, but that is all. This death has nothing to do with me. This whole thing has nothing to do with me. There are two conclusions I've drawn from Fox. Number one. Last night, your friend infiltrated the victim's cabin. And number two. That same thing was responsible for the victim losing his life. Turn as wide as a bolt for ice cream. Don't know see right. He hit the nail on the head. Someone's friend? Killed Mr. Asogi? Looks like he can't speak with that snake coil around his head. I would advise as little movement as possible, see then. You wouldn't want that fangs of that long friend again. Really? The snake killed him? No. Shomes is I don't think I don't think Shom was right. So everyone, let us begin. Herlock Shomes is proud of his logic and reasoning spectacular. The great deduction. The game is afoot. Alright, let's go. It's time to dance. The truth is an entity. Miss Alova, moments ago you claimed the following. His death has nothing to do with me. This whole thing has nothing to do with me. But you cannot deceive yourself. Yes, when you recall those horrid events, your aching heart smarts with pain. And it is that very pain that evidences your extraordinary link to the victim's death. So, we ask, what was the nature of this intruder that stole into the victim's cabin on that pretentious night? Why, naturally, it was the friend in which you boarded this vessel, was it not? Ah, as I suspected, another tell-tale glance. Without doubt, your friend is a writhing servant, we see before us. And yet, the fact leaves us in a quandary. The victim's written observation on the night in question tell of a speckled bag. Whereas regrettably, the specimens mark do not fit that description in any way. What explanation can we give? Was the sight that fell upon the victim's eyes last night? No, no, don't look at me. This has nothing to do with any of this. Oh, but it does. You have the answer to this quandary even now, hidden behind your back. Yes, that which you are trying but failing to conceal can only be the snakes that slow the skin. Evidently, after the subtle and horrible crime, this most deadly friend of yours shed its original skin, no? I don't know what you are talking about. Last night, through the ventilator visible in this cabin, your then speckled friend slid in next door. Using the bell cord on the other side of as a bridge, the serpent silently, silently descended into the victim's quarters. In the dim light, it appeared to the young gentleman who was about to lose his life as a speckled band. In summary, the nature of this friend of yours, which last night infiltrated the scene of crime, is a rare breed of snake whose markings change with each time it slows its skin. A snake so dreadful, you can only imagine it would be found in the deepest depths of India. Part of the matter, a grim denies of the victim. How did this young man lose his life, and why? According to the data, of which I have been apprised, it would appear there are no visible signs of injury. Ah. In fact, the 
mask of senses of the victim's death can only be explained by terrible venom. Now, we get this as far. You can reasonably imagine that there will remain the evidence to affirm it at the scene of the crime. Oh no! Could that be? Yes, the examination of the deceased party will prove the cause of death conclusively. The almost, but not quite, imperceptible puncture of wound left by the venomous fang will seal the truth. Yes, the vestiges of the snake bite did by your terrifying friend. This, this, this makes no sense. There's no point in feigning ignorance, Miss Pavlova. After the incident, you endeavored to hide everything, didn't you? Uh, after the incidents, you never tried everything, did you? But now, your involuntary glance betrays the hiding place you chose. That's right, you hid the evidence that links you to the victim's end in that troubling case. When we first met in this cabin, it came to my attention that your case moved periodically. Your sovereign assassin was restless inside, no doubt. You, you don't. I was telling that the victim made note of a low whistling sound heard minutes before his end. That your signal was not the sound that you had used to train your sovereign friend. To, to train? Indeed, you put the serpent through this ventilator and wait. After a period, you summoned it back with a whistle. You couldn't know that the animal had done its duty, so you listened to signs of life next door. If the victim had appeared not to have been dispatched, you would release the snake once more. Do you deny the snake has undergone such training? It's not true! Having slid it through the ventilator and down the bell cord, the creature needed only to sink its fangs at once. And its venom would course through the victim's fangs, during its ending his existence forever. That is the true nature of the speckled band that took the poor man's life. There can be no doubt my logic is infallible. Well, the funny thing is, we know for sure that it wasn't any poison, because uh, that part was inspected, for sure. Thus concludes Holak Shum's great deduction of the speckled band. <laughs> Miss Pavuba has trained her pet snake as a killing machine. There, on the floor. You observe a saucer of milk. The promise of food is the key to training any creature. I incredible. You've solved the mystery. Amazing. Her great deduction really lives up to its name. Now is she where Herlock Sholmes has become such a household name? My dear man. It was nothing remarkable. As the Russians say, I could have done it with one left hand. an option. Opinion, Mr. Sholmes? But of course, what's on your mind? It's just, about your deductions before, some things don't quite make sense to me. I welcome the questions as to my method, and I will answer both loudly and proudly. Oh, well, good. First of all, snakes are eggling creatures, part of the reptile family. Informed, madam. And reptiles, um, don't drink milk. Ah. Oh. It's really only mammals that like to drink milk, you see. So, I'm not sure it would be possible to train a snake using milk as a reward. No matter, no doubt, Miss Pavlova. Use some other treat to encourage your pet to do her bidding. Milk was merely an example. The logic holds. Well, there's something else. Snakes have no ears. Yes, so I'm not sure it would really be possible to signal to a snake by whistling. But madam, what are, what are the tales from Arabia? Have you not heard of the snakes that dance to the sounds of a flute? 
I think perhaps the performers play their music in time with Snake's natural movements. Oh, I see. No hands, no feet, no ears. These creatures are so inept as to be practically useless. Don't take it out on the snakes, Mr. Sholmes. Um, there is one other thing. You have more? Snakes use the scales on their bellies to propel themselves. So, I'm not really sure that a snake could manage to climb up a flat bell cord like the ones in this cavern. Then it should try harder. Please, don't be angry Mr. Me with me, Shol Mr. Sholmes. The point is, even if the snake had gone through the ventilator to the next door cabin, it couldn't have come back without help. What I'm trying to say... ...is that there are a number of reasons why it's difficult to imagine the snake would have a part in this. <laughs> oh, Mr. Sholmes. Hello, <laughs> he's a hater. <laughs> I think... We need to step in and help again, Mr. Nadaholdo. Oh no, you don't mean... Yes, we need to modify Mr. Sholmes' latest sections and turn them into great ones. They ought to be. I had a feeling that was coming. All right, let's give it a try. Just what I was waiting for, Mr. Nadaholdo. Yes, right. So, cast your eyes down to your wrists again. What? Freedom! <laughs> You've done it again! Your handcuffs are gone! Where did they go? Fear not. I shall see they're restored after our work is done. I really wish you'd leave them off. Now, everyone, let us begin. Herlock Sholmes is proud to possess his logic and reasoning spectacular. My turn. <laughs> Course correction. Hold them, Mr. Sholmes. Intruder's identity. Alright. This is the part we need to fix. Hearts smarts with pain. Her hand. She has a pain expression on her face. Yes, that's true. She looks as though Kazuma Sama's death is weighing on heavily on her mind. We are not sure that Mr. Sholmes has read her quite correctly, is that it? Will there be some other way to interpret her expression then? Let's take a moment. We look very closely at Miss Pavlova. Ah, she has a scratch on her uh, hand. Maybe from her cat? Oh, another one's done. Look! This looks like a very painful wound. It looks like a scratch made by some kind of small animal. And fairly recently, too. Well, whatever scratch here doesn't appear to be around here. Wait a percent. Hi! Kabuki. Yes, when you recall those sort of events, you're that cloth scratch smarts with pain. Indeed. A simple observation reveals that the wound is fresh. Miss Pug Miss Pavlova, did you in fact receive that scratch? Sometime last night. Huh? When I think about the young man who died next door, I feel so sad. When I'm sad, the pain from this wound is worse. Alright, so this part. It's also the same. So the friend. And also she's looking at the snake, I think she's looking at the guy, right? Because he helped him her get on the uh sneak aboard, I would think. It seems likely that a scratch mark on the back of this bubble with his hand. This may be this friend of hers, doesn't it? Except snakes don't have claws, do they? Oh, maybe he's hiding it behind him? No, they don't. They don't even have hands or feet on which claws might grow. Well then. If that snake isn't her pet, what is? What's the true identity of his friend of hers? We should follow her gaze now to hold the sun. That's when we'll find the answer. Alright, so she's looking over here. Oh, maybe her photo. See Miss Roganov. Okay, so she must be looking at this. Ah, oh, see, it's a cat. Oh, how cute. Ah, oh, look at the photograph in this frame. This must be something Miss Pavlova brought with her when she ran away. She's exceptionally beautiful, isn't she? Yes, that's true. But personally, there's a little black creature she's holding that's caught my eye. Maybe we take a bit closer look at this. Look at the little cat Miss Pavlova is cuddling here. Oh, what a cute little kitten! 
I can be with you. I can be with you? Is that how you say that? Uh, can I move another one for the blackest outfit? Hmm, a black kitten. From the look of this picture, at least, Miss Alola seems very attached to it. Hi! Without doubt, your little your friend is a little kitten we've seen before. Yes, the scratch on the back of your hand makes that abundantly clear. Oh no! We're about to the spot cannon isn't clear, but what is clear is that you brought the animal with you when you ran away, didn't you? behind. Hmm, Darker would appear to be a Russian blue. And yes, that fact should use us in a corner for you. Alright, so the speckled band. Maybe the cat of a necklace or something? Or like a handkerchief that she was holding. Maybe the cat snuck into uh, his room. Did you see that? She just took something out of her pocket and hid it behind her back. If she just left it in her pocket, no one would have ever known. Oh yes, boys like that are Mr. Schultz's specialty. He's ever so cleverly forced her to reveal something. I thought deduction was a specialty, or maybe making me believe that was a boy too. Anyway, I find it hard to believe that's the skin of a snake. In which case, just what is Miss Fuggable hiding behind her back? Snake's smooth skin. It? Oh, the stick thing? How do I click on it? Because I can't really. Hmm. Left ear. So it just says the skin. Just as petite ears and then that beautiful hair, like little pink shells. Oh, what's that? Something dangling down from her ear. Ah, that's an earring. The crescent moon part looks as though it's made of wood. Charming, isn't it? Women do seem to love adornments like that. And their hair, around their necks, around on their fingers, and even hanging from their ears, it seems. Well, Julia is beautiful, not a little son. Okay. I don't know where else to look, though. Or do I just need to, like... Try to... See, there's, like, a stick, right? I think I need to click on this first. Well, it is speckled, and it is a band, but what is it? It seems to be soft and fluffy, a long piece of cloth of some sort. And that looks like a handle on one end. I'm thinking maybe a cat's toy. That sort is common in the West, apparently. How is that a toy for cats? Cats like to chase a, the band around a pod. Kids in particular love that sort of toy. You only need to wave in front of them, and they pounce to catch it. <laughs> that sounds positively adorable. Ah, a cat's toy. Okay, now we can click on it. Yes, the thing you're trying, but failing to conceal is, um, a, a cat's toy. Precisely in the true nature of the now infamous book of Wonder. And it was this toy that you dangled through the ventilator. You waited around, I presume, naturally the victim couldn't fail to notice it. But why? For what reason? Oh, maybe she thought her cat was over there. My dear boy, can there can only be one answer to that. After a feline friend disappeared through the ventilator into the neighboring cabin, Miss Arvobo attempted to use the speckled cat's toy to incite the creature to return. Ah. In summary, the nature of this friend of Miss Arvobo's, which last night infiltrated the crime, seen the crime, is a blighted Russian blue breed of a cat by the name of Darka. <laughs> A truly troublesome feline, young Daka is proving to be. She must be caged once found. You will forgive us for borrowing the photograph of your pet, Miss Pavlova. Pavlova and Darka photograph. A photograph of Miss Pavlova and her friend, the, a kitten named Darka. The tiara she would wear on the stage can also be seen. It was after I gave her her food last night. That's when it happened. 
She scratched the back of my hand and then ran up the bell cord. Before I could do anything, she had disappeared through the ventilator. Taka, she is so naughty. Purple thing um, that we found on the ground with the that that might be the bell from the cat's uh, necklace. We yawn. We come to the heart of the matter. We bring the box into the room. How did this young man lose his life and why? According to the data of which I am apprised, it would appear that there are no visible signs of injury. All right, so it's the same thing as well. Get to the next part. So no terrible venom, of course. What Mr. Shom says is true. There are no signs of a wound anywhere on Kazuma-sama's body. That's right. But Mr. Shom seems to be unaware of one very important detail. Kazuma wasn't poisoned. Yes, it would seem so. Let's give him the information he's missing now. Okay, so the cause of death was the blunt object, right? This one. Only a Goliath would be strong enough to survive that. Seems strong enough, isn't some moral freak, you know? <laughs> the jury is out. Anyway, we have on good authority that the victim's neck was broken. Now, if we take that as a fact, we can reasonably imagine that there remains evidence to affirm it at the scene of the crime. Oh no! Could there be? Yes, the examination of the deceased died because his neck was broken. In other words, he was probably struck by something or someone. Yes, that's a distinct possibility. As of yet, no weapon has been found though. Presumably Darka didn't silently creep up behind Kazuma and deal a fatal blow. I suppose. It's possible that he had fallen and hit the ground awkwardly. Could have been a terrible act of fortune that he broke his neck completely by accident. Oh yes, a bad fall could explain it. It's rather hard to believe a cousin of some of them. He wasn't, a, he wasn't a clumsy man. Hmm, well, we need to fix this deduction somehow. Is there anything from the scene of the crime that would explain what happened? Maybe this? He slipped, maybe. of the mark on the floor will prove the cause of death and the This particular mark, so prominently visible next to the victim's body, is the closet of shoe polish. Shoe polish? Indeed. Positively identified by the little analysis device I constructed which I carry now as much as Beeswax, tallow, and dye were my results. The undeniable ingredients of shoe polish. This is it's so funny when they just like spin around. And the color of the polish was a perfect match to the color of Mr. So lace leather shoes. Looking at this mark, it's not hard to imagine what happened. For some reason, Mr. Asuki must have caught his foot at the point on the door and tripped. <laughs> and by a dreadful turn of most fortune, put his neck against some immovable object that fell to the floor. Suffering a fatal blow to the spine, the victim's vertebrae shattered, and in that instant, he lost his life. <laughs> Holy crap, was it just, really just an accident? I don't know. I don't know anything about this. Is that really true, Miss Bubba? What about the evidence left at the scene where Mr. Sogi lost his life? Yes, the facts are as clear as they to me. Oh, sorry, that's Sholmes. Ha ha ha. You did all you could to conceal the incriminating evidence. But now, your involuntary glance betrays the hiding place you chose. That's right. You hid the evidence that links you to the victim's death in that troubling case. Uh, I don't believe it. Cousin son merely tripped over and now he's no more? That can't be true. I refuse to accept it. I know it's hard to believe, but the mark on the floor does seem to suggest that's what happened. But 
As this part of Mr. Sholm's deduction is right, Miss Alola is trying to hide some evidence that would prove it. Here in this cabin, somewhere in the direction that she just cast her eyes. Where I wonder? Where I wonder? Let's have a good look around. The answer must be here somewhere. Okay. Kirchiara, maybe? Ah, something appears to have dropped 20,000 rubles here. Somebody appears. It hasn't been dropped enough to hold the sign in place. It's starting to sound like Mr. Stroll. It's not starting to sound like, a great sound like the great detective. Let's look inside, yeah. This is where Miss Valula hit her friend. That's right. No, it wasn't a snake after all. No, it was a little kitten she calls Darka. Not that it's anywhere to be seen now. The student has let itself out of the ca case and gone its way. The inspector's wrapped itself around someone's head somewhere, trying to make a new friend. Either that, or it's crushing their hand to pieces. The point is, where has it got to? Paperwork basket? Maybe she's looking at something in here. This is a waste paper basket. Perhaps all the first class cabins have it. And this Alola only started occupying this cabin late last night. Presumably, there's not much rubbish in there yet. Ah, the broken bell. Oh, what's that? It's a broken piece of glass, isn't it? Yes, it is. I feel like I've seen it somewhere before. If it looks familiar, familiar perhaps it's more than your mind is simply playing tricks on you. Okay, so this one. <laughs> Ooh. Oh yeah. That's right. I hid the evidence that leads you to the victim's death in that wa waste paper basket. <laughs> Here we have a fragment of some intricate glass object you can see. Or oh. uh, one that has a familiar air, in fact. Precisely. We found another piece of broken glass before in Miss Rasso's cabin. And as you can see, the two pieces fit together perfectly. <laughs> Oh no! So, Miss Malvova, shall we consider what this tells us? Why would it be that this part of this glass object, which is evidently broken and seen in the victim's death, should be found in the wastebook basket in your cabin? You're well acquainted with this glass bell, are you not? Uh, I don't. I don't know in a hush rush accent of yours. Won't save you this time, dear girl. Why? Because we have conclusive evidence linking you to the bell in question. What? Take it away, Mr. Narukodo. Um, yes. The evidence linking you to Miss Marbova and the little glass bell. That would be the cat. For sure. Hi! If you look at this photograph, you can clearly see, hanging from darkest corner, the very glass bell in question. Hey. Teresa's caught up with you, Miss Papova. Uh, the young man who lost his life last night did so after a truly inauspicious fall. And the cause of the fa that fateful stumble? Darker. I couldn't. I couldn't tell anyone. I'm. I'm sorry. That's not bad. Did you really just die by falling? Explain why everyone has headaches, you know, from the drugged food. <laughs>